What's going on, everybody? It is Wednesday the 16th? I can't keep track of days anymore. Yeah, Wednesday the 16th. I'm bad at this. What do you want me to do? Uh, yesterday was ridiculous when it comes to weather. I don't think it's going to be much better today. Uh, we've got six games. Five games? Six games? Five. Five, five on, the, on the late. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that Yankees gnat to make up stuff in the middle keeps throwing me off from a time perspective. Um, so five games. We've got weather issues in the in the night slate as well, or the main slate. So get ready for it. Jake, how'd your night go last night? Um, I had one really good call, the Barrios call, and then the rest of my lineup. The Twins just couldn't really get anything going. Some hard outs against Flaherty. Uh, that's baseball. So it sucks and you can't put it all together. But I felt really good about the Barrios call. So I was excited about that. Hope you guys profited some off of that. Yeah, I, I didn't. I had one of my lines on FanDuel with Barrios, which is uh, one less than I would have liked, I guess. I would have preferred two. I would have preferred three. Yeah. It was just rough. It was just rough. Not enough from Syndergaard. That one, that's what broke me. Yeah. But anyway. Just the pitch count got him. Like, so. Yeah, every time I looked, it was just like, oh, it's first and second. I was like, cool. Can't wait till he has to struggle to get out of this. Right. <laughs> uh, you'll see this v this view that I've got right now is a bit sparse compared to normal. Uh, I've been building out a new look so that we can have uh, more stuff on the screen at one time. So this is as far as I got into today. But we've got all the key stuff. So we'll be able to get to what we need to. You ready to start? I'm ready to go. All righty. Uh, first game up, Yankees and Nats. Um, Yanks with a 3.2 run implied total. Nats 4.1. It's a 61% chance to win for the Nats. Uh, Sabathia going for the Yankees. Max Scherzer going for Washington. And uh, we might as well just say it right off the bat. This game's probably not even going to happen. Um, or at least it, like, it just looks like thunderstorms from 5 o'clock until 11 o'clock at the minimum. Um... They got postponed yesterday and are supposed to make up the rest of that game, I think, today. Uh, good luck with that. So, I don't have a ton to talk about here outside of I really like Scherzer if this game happens. Um, but, other, like, I don't, I just don't see it really happening. Do you? Do you, do you think this is going to, we're even going to be able to roster anybody here? I honestly have no idea. Um, I would lean towards no. Uh, they didn't play last night, if I remember correctly. I, there was a ton of weather games. They played, a, they sure played a couple they, innings. They, they, they got it suspended, right? Yeah, it's 3-3, three, three, I think. So I'm not uh, certain how that works. I know it happened a couple years ago. I don't know if that happened in any games last year. Um, but this night game looks unlikely to play. I don't know about the weather today. Um Pitching would be really tough to play, and there are two other studs you can play outside of Scherzer. So, like, he would probably rank last for me right now out of him, him Sale, and Verlander. So, I mean, I do like some Nationals bats here against Sabathia, like Rendon and even Mark Reynolds and Kendrick. But, like, it's hard to really say how this game's going to go or we're so far out. Yeah, um, just based on this weather, I'm I'm super nervous about it. Uh, Scherzer popped up a lot for me on my first crunch, uh, so you know he, he's definitely a direction I would have been leaning. But if the weather looks like this, I'll have zero Scherzer just because. You know, if I read the the percent chance of rain from five to eleven, eighty one seventy sixty five sixty nine nice eighty two seventy five seventy like this is it's just gonna be thunderstorms the entire time. So I have a hard time recommending anything in this game. I like Scherzer. 
I don't really like either set of bats. I don't have any Sabathia or Yankees bats in my, in my first run through, and that's independent of weather. And then just a little, uh, like probably like one or two lines worth of Nats stacks, but I don't expect to have anything here. Yeah, it would just be Nats bats for me and Scherzer if the weather somehow clears up. Um, I wouldn't target against Scherzer with any of these Yankees bats, even on a short slate. No. I don't. Like, lefty power usually can get to him, but I, the Yankees don't have a ton of that. Nope. Like, Gregorius is fine, mostly at Yankee Stadium, but outside of Yankee Stadium, he doesn't really hit that many home runs because there's no short porch, kind of like it. Um, so I'm, like, I'm off the Yankees bats. I'm off Scherzer until I see some better weather. And then I like a few of the Nats righties. So that's about all I have. Yeah, I like a little bit of Turner, a little bit of Kendrick. Um, I guess Mark Reynolds, now that he's back, would be kind of interesting, but a little bit more expensive than I would like. So, yeah, it's just it's really not a game for me, and I think the weather is going to be uh, a little rough. Yeah, exactly. A's and Red Sox. A's three run implied total, Red Sox five run implied total, which is just monstrous. Uh, you don't get too many lines like that. 29% chance to win for the A's. Uh, it's Trevor Cahill going for Oakland, Chris Sale going for Boston. I mean, Sale is going to be just like, he's going to, I mean, his ownership is going to be 100% at the rate that this uh, slate and the weather is going. It's going to be monstrous. Uh, it's hard to not like him. Um, I will obviously have a ton of sale, as will most of the people. Uh, do you see anything other than what I'm saying? You're, are you going to pivot and go to Trevor Cahill or something? Well, I, I mean, I did, or I'm in the process of writing up Trevor Cahill. Um, but yeah, sale, he's my number one today. The weather looks a lot better here right now. Obviously, that can change, but I'm seeing like 10 to 15% chances of rain throughout game time um, which is fine they'll play through it it may not even rain um, but obviously keep an eye on that so sale has back-to-back -back games with a 20 or higher swinging strike rate which is pretty insane 27 strikeouts in 16 innings in that time uh, the A's are like an average matchup as far as strikeouts go but they have the league's lowest walk percentage against lefty pitchers this year so I mean, I'm expecting Sale to go deep, strike out a bunch of guys, and probably be the top raw scoring pitcher. Um, I think Scherzer could match him, but I much prefer Sale over Verlander. Um, and then Scherzer's got the weather concerns too. So, yeah, Sale's the number one. Yeah, it's, it's not even close. It's it's hard to go a different direction than Sale tonight. He's yeah. just, I, I mean, it's Oakland's. Not bad. I mean, honestly, against lefties, uh, I do have some new stats hiding up here, so I don't have to go digging on fan graphs while we're doing it. But, I mean, they've got a, an above-average weighted runs created plus. So just eyeing that lets me know that they've had some success against lefties. Uh, the problem is that three-run implied total just makes it difficult. I've got a bunch of Red Sox from a hitting perspective. I'll have a bunch of sale. I don't totally mind a cheapo Oakland stack, but that's re that's gonna be really contrarian tonight. Yeah, I mean, so it's a five game slate, maybe maybe smaller than that. Maybe if four. yeah, maybe four or three, who knows? So, I mean, I don't mind taking a hitter or two if Sale's gonna be fifty percent, which he's probably gonna be fifty percent owned if that Yankees game doesn't look like it's gonna play at least fifty percent. Yeah. So I don't mind taking a bat or two against Sale. Like, he's had games where he gives up a bunch of power. Um, so who's your favorite, like, couple A's bats that you would target against Sale with? So I got a ton of Chad Pinder in my first uh, crunch. You'll see I have it in here now. It won't uh, – I'll have it in for DraftKings as well moving forward. But I've got all the ownership of my first crunch in here, so I have, like, visual indicators. Um, so Chad Pinder came up a lot. Uh, decent ISO, you know, righty versus lefty matchup. I think that would look good. He's only 2,100 on FanDuel. So, like, you know, I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel here. But Chris Davis and Matt Chapman, 
both guys in the heart of the A's order, big time power, uh, definitely have a chance to like impact the game. Um, so I'd be looking at like Pinder, Davis, Chapman, and then you know Semyon as well if he's leading off. Yeah, I think um, I like Pinder, and then I think Lowry would be up there and Matt Chapman. So any of those guys, I think on DK makes some sense at their positions. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not going out of my way to target against Sale, but no. if you're not playing Sale and he's going to be mega chalk, you have to assume someone's going to get to him. You can't really bank on an injury occurring. Um, so you have to – he, for him to not be the nuts, even at 60%, someone's going to have to get to him. So it's a good idea to take a batter or two against him. At least that's how I think for tournaments. I would agree with you there. On a, on a slate this size for sure. Yeah. Um, what do you think about Boston Bats? So I'm – for Boston Bats – versus Cahill, I'm either going like full Boston stack or I'm playing Cahill. <clears throat> so Cahill is the guy that can get really wild at times, can walk a bunch of guys. He hasn't really done it this year. Like I think we're going to know pretty quick how this starts going to go for Cahill. If he's looking good, if he's missing bats in the first couple innings, like he could go pretty deep and easily pay off the $5,100 on DK. Uh, if he is not, he's going to have a really tough time because this matchup sucks for him. Yeah. The Red Sox are one of the worst matchups in the MLB against a right-handed pitcher this year. Just look at that WRC Plus that you have up there. Um, it's like they're they're just so good top to bottom. Cahill has the stuff to like limit that lineup and pitch really well here, but I think it's going to go one of two ways. I don't see him going like – five innings, three earned, and five strikeouts. Yeah. I think it's going to be like he goes six or seven, a K per inning, gives up a run or two, and then the other side of that is he could go two innings and give up eight earned. Like, I don't think we're going to see like a, a middle performance here. I would agree. Once it goes, I think the, the levy is just going to break. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like a lot of the Red Sox bats. Uh, oddly enough, more down the lineup than closer to the top. So, like, Eduardo Nunez popped up a lot for me. Jackie Bradley popped up a lot for me. But Jackie Bradley's price is just so crazy low. Um, I'm like an odd Jackie Bradley fan. So, uh, I like Bogarts quite a bit here. Um, I'll end up with a, a lot of Red Sox. Five-run implied total is the highest of the slate. Uh, if there really are only four games by the time this is all said and done, and it honestly might be three, depending on how that Braves game shakes out, uh, the Red Sox are going to be very, very popular. But I'm not telling. We're not telling anybody anything they don't already know. You could look at that five-run implied total and see that there are only like what three and a half games yeah. tonight. You're going to get a lot yeah. of Red Sox. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you think that the Red Sox are going to be the highest on stack? tonight they have to be right yeah i'm just seeing so maybe it's different on on fanduel a little bit the pricing i'm just wondering how you can fit in like bets and jb with sale i guess you'd have to get like a mccarthy or garrett richards or someone like that i'm just trying to get an idea of what the chalk lineup build is going to be like because with when i'm playing one lineup i don't want to be on the chalk build on a four game slate because i'm basically just raking myself then um so, like so Sale, Walker, Bueller, Red Sox, Dodgers stack works. Oh, you can do all that? Yeah, okay. Okay. Since I so, have it up here, yeah, you can get yeah. to Sale, Walker, Bueller with Red Sox and Dodgers or Red Sox and Braves, but that one probably won't happen. Yeah. Um, okay, so, yeah, the Red Sox, then I guess you can make it work. They're going to be chalky. That's why I do like the idea of playing Cahill. Uh, do you think Kale's going to be popular at all just because of his price? I don't. Well, I guess I need to answer that a little bit differently. I didn't realize how discounted he was on DraftKings. So he's 7200 yeah. on FanDuel, 5100 on DK. Um, let's see, did I get him at all? No. Uh, I'd be surprised if he's chalky. Okay. I didn't so I like get him the... at all in DraftKings. And like... That doesn't necessarily mean anything, but I feel like I would see him at least a little bit if he were going to be majorly owned. 
Um, that three run implied total is really what's getting them. Like there's just, there's such a huge gap between the Red Sox and everybody else on this slate. Mm-hmm. that It's going to be hard there. They're, you know, like either pitcher and Astros angels, the both teams have an under four implied total. Marlins are at 3.2 Dodgers are at four. There's pitching elsewhere down the line that like fits a little bit. Yeah. He's obviously uh, going to get some ownership or there's only so many options. So I like playing a, a low owned Cahill at a really really low price on DK then. Yeah, I would agree uh, with you. So, I mean, you can make a case either way. Like I said, I think we know, or I think we'll know how the start's going to go for Cahill pretty soon into it. Yeah, he's not bad. Like four point one nine steamer FIP. He's he's a he's a good functional MLB pitcher. He's third in whiffs per swing this year That's behind crazy. Sale and or uh, Scherzer and Corbin. Like he, he's got really awesome stuff. Sixteen percent swinging strike rate. Like I don't think this guy, he, he's just not a fifty-one hundred dollar pitcher. No. If he was seven K here, I would be like, okay, maybe now we're getting to a price where I don't want to play him. But you can literally do anything if you play him. Like you can get all the top bats and like Verlander or Scherzer if he plays or Sale. I want to look at his game log and see what he's done lately. Twelve Ks in his last start. Yeah, he's coming off the DL. He, he skipped a start. What was he on the DL for? Never he mind, just, elbow. Yeah. <clears throat> 12 Ks, one walk against Baltimore on May 5th. Whew. 31 to 6 strikeout to walk ratio so far this year. 227 XFIP. His XFIP was negative for that yeah. uh, May 5th start, which you don't I see that. all that often. That's pretty nuts. Yeah. Um, it's a weird game. It's going to be, there's going to be a lot of ownership in this game in spots you don't necessarily expect just because of the way this day is shaking out. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Uh, Dodgers and Marlins. This one I don't see any problems with, so we could talk about it like it's legitimate. If they somehow get some rain inside this dome, we've got bigger issues. Uh, Dodgers... 59% 59% chance to win. They've got a four-run implied total. Marlins, 41% chance. 3.2-run implied total. Uh, Walker Bueller going for the Dodgers. Caleb Smith going for Miami. Um, I got a little bit of both of these guys on FanDuel on my crunch. Uh, I'll, that'll probably go up a little bit once I exclude <clears throat> Scherzer. I got to reappropriate you know, 40% of my ownership from Scherzer to... Other guys, I assume Walker Bueller will be relatively popular at this point. Uh, I like the hitting big time on the Dodgers side. Uh, what are you thinking about from a pitching perspective, though? Are you looking at Bueller or Smith? Um, <clears throat> I'm looking at Smith. Like, I just love what he's done so far. It's not a, a great matchup. He's got a 346 XFIP. He's striking out both righties and lefties nearly 30% this year. Uh, decent whip, and then he's top 30 in whiffs per swing. And then I, I think I mentioned the last time, he's got like three pitches that are inside the top 25 in whiffs per swing amongst the entire MLB, which is really impressive. He's I think he's just a good pitcher, and he's 6,500 here. Pretty low run total for the Dodgers. And then just as a bonus, I think the Dodgers' bats are going to be really chalky on DK because they're all super cheap. Yeah, they're so, going to be chalky on both sides. <laughs> Yeah, so Smith, he's a good leverage play. No, I can I can see that for sure. Um, super, super cheap. How much did I get of him? Yeah, so I got, like, the full allotment of Caleb Smith on my DraftKings crunch, like 40%. So uh, that's the that's the place I am when I'm not on Cahill. I guess it's probably the easiest way to say that. Uh, I don't have a, too much of a problem there. You know, it's it's not the best spot with the Dodgers being a pretty sizable favorite, but they're not a favorite because of their offense. It's just more Walker Bueller than anything else. So I'll likely have both of these guys, but I will have a ton of Dodgers bats. Uh, my first crunch on FanDuel is just loaded with Dodgers, basically the entire lineup. Um, anybody standing out for you specifically for the Dodgers? Um, Justin Turner, like. I just love him. He's awesome against both righties and lefties, Matt Kemp and Chris Taylor. So three of the top four, and you can throw in Kike Hernandez. I'm not saying you can't stack against Caleb Smith. I think he's good, but he could certainly 
have some trouble with all these righties. Oh, for sure. Um, you're going to want both sides of this game, honestly. Uh, with such a little slate, you'll have... I mean, if you're playing multiple lines, you'll have a bunch of Dodgers stacks without Caleb Smith, and you'll have a bunch of Caleb Smith without any Dodgers lines. It's just going to be yeah. how this works today. Um, let's see. Is there anything else I want to look at? Uh, what do you think of... Uh, any Marlins bats? Because I got a decent amount of Marlins on FanDuel. Yeah, I'd probably just go with Bohr, Real Muto. Um, Anderson I prefer against lefties, so I don't know. It's really just Bohr and Real Muto for me. Yeah. No Prado at that price? Um, no, I'm not a big Prado guy. He just doesn't strike out, which is frustrating for opposing starting pitchers, but yeah. not a guy I really like to play. See if there's anything else I should touch on. Derek Dietrich, 2100 on FanDuel, I think is a really nice price for him. Um, if you need someone righty lefty matchup, you know, hitting sixth, it's okay. I'll have some. I'll have some Marlins. I don't mind it all that much on what could be a very tiny slate. Yeah, you can make a case for a lot of different things on this slate because. We know where the ownership's going to be for the most part, and like weather sucks, so you know where you can and can't play pitchers, or you should know by by lock. So yeah. it's going to be a weird one. For sure. Cubs and Braves. I'll start with saying that they're looking at a bunch of uh, rain from the six o'clock to midnight range. Uh, I think this one's probably just likely to be very wet with uh, a pot a potential rain delay. Uh, I don't see any sign of it being, like, fully postponed, but you do want to keep an eye on it now. 52% uh, chance to win for the Cubs. They've got a 4.7 run implied total. Braves, 4.5. It's Tyler Chatwood for the Cubs. It's Brandon McCarthy uh, for the Braves. Uh, I don't really care for the pitching in this game. If I'm having anything here, it'll be uh, a bunch of the hitters. Neither do I. So I, I hope there is some chance of of rain here because that makes me more wanting to play hitters get their ownership down and stuff and i would even consider a game stack i like both sides a ton yeah uh just a ton of respect for the braves offense a bunch of speed and a bunch of really good hitters albies freeman acuna uh I even like kurt suzuki against chatwood in ciarte um so i like all the braves really marcakis i didn't mention but i would play him too um and then the Cubs against McC McCarthy just does not miss any bats at all. 6.1% swinging strike rate this year. No whiffs. He's the guy I would never play and a guy I, I like targeting against. So, like, the good hitters on Chicago, Bryant, Rizzo, Contreras, and then Schwarber for some power uh, in the six hole I like a ton. So I'm all over the hitting here. Hope it stays dry enough to play, but um, wet enough to keep people off of it. I'm with you on the hitting. Uh, Zobrist is a guy that came up a ton in my first crunch. Uh, so he'll he's a guy that I'll be focusing on a bit today. I got a lot of Braves. Uh, I mean, this game is just naturally going to be a place where people go for offense. I would expect both teams to have pretty sizable ownership, uh, especially if we see that it's just going to be a little wet. Um, I don't think anybody's going to really be looking at Chatwood or McCarthy uh, it's just not a direction I'm trying to go. Uh, McCarthy at 4200 <clears throat> is an interesting price point, but it's Brandon McCarthy, and the Cubs have a 4.7 yeah. run implied total, so it's hard to get too excited about it. Yeah, I've got McCarthy as, like, based on how I rank matchups and him as a pitcher, I've got him as the worst combination of that on this slate. So he just does not miss any bats. No, he does not. Yeah, other than hitting, I mean, this is just, it's hitting across the board. Um, and I think Zobris is the best option in the game just because of price. At least on FanDuel, only 2,600 to lead off with a 4.7 run implied total and the rest of the Cubs bats behind you. Like, if he's got a yeah. decent day and he can get himself on, you know, he could easily score three runs and be two for four or something like that with a walk. Mm -hmm. 
he could just piece it together really nicely today. So yeah. I would be looking in that direction uh, as sure. a priority. Final game, Astros and Angels. Astros, 3.9 run implied total. Angels, 3.4. It's a 56% chance to win for the Astros. Justin Verlander going for Houston. Garrett Richards uh, going for the Angels. Uh, it's hard not to like Verlander. Um, he's going to have a ton of ownership, especially with that wet Yankees-Nats game. Uh, so it'll just be all a, a lot of sale and a lot of Verlander. Um, Garrett Richards, 5800 on DraftKings is a really interesting price here. Uh, I think that he is significantly more in play on DraftKings than he is on FanDuel. It's 8500 on FanDuel. I can't imagine getting to any Garrett Richards, but I kind of like him on DraftKings. Yeah, the Astros haven't been that tough of a matchup this year. They just have not been hitting well. They've been striking out a lot more than they did last year. So, I mean, I could make a case for Richards. Um, <clears throat> I think he's safer than, like, Cahill. Probably even a little bit safer than Smith. I don't know if he has the same upside as them. Um, but I think Richards makes sense on DK. Who do you think is going to be, like, the chalk SP2? You think it's going to be Richards because of the low Houston total? Yeah. I mean, Richards or or Smith, maybe? I don't know. I haven't played around with lineup construction too much, but Richards is going to get some ownership here. I think he makes for a decent play. I'm just on Smith and Cahill a little bit more as of now. Um, <clears throat> if, if Richards is going to be chalked, then I have interest in targeting some Houston hitters against him, but... Uh, not a, I don't love a ton in this game. Do you like Verlander? I do. Um, twelve thousand on DK is quite the price, though. How much should I get of him here? Yeah, I mean it's going to be hard to not like Verlander if Scherzer can't go. Like you're just going to nat it's you'll naturally end up with a ton of him because there's not enough other places to spend the salary. Like, right. if I pull the Yankees-Nats game right now and re-crunch re DraftKings, I expect uh, I expect Sale and Verlander to both hit whatever cap I put, put in for uh, pitching exposure. So I bumped it to 55 now, and I think both of them will be relatively close to that number. Yeah. There's just, there's just not enough games. Like, in four games... I mean, you don't have a choice. Like, Verlander will be, what, easily 30% owned? Um, you think so? I think Sale's going to be super, super chalk. He's cheaper and in a perceived better matchup for sure. So let, let's say Sale's 60% owned on DraftKings. Okay. I mean, Verlander almost has to be like 40 or 50 just to get all of the salary <laughs> for everyone's lines. Because what if you're not using Sale... Who yeah. are you using? You almost have to be using right. Verlander or what? Bueller and Smith or Bueller and Richards? Yeah, I mean And then you're probably leaving salary on the table. This is a this is a really weird slate. So especially if that Yankee game, Yankee national game gets rained out. Because now you're just looking at like the game theory perspective. Um, if if Verlander was gonna be like a third of sales ownership, I would Probably just go with the ownership and Verlander in a bad matchup and just hope he gets it done and has one of his awesome games. Um, <clears throat> but it's just a tough matchup for him. So Let's see what we got here. So I bumped all of the pitching ownership up to 55%. Sales slamming against that top part. Bueller and Caleb Smith are both that high, and then Verlander's hitting 40%. So, like, yeah, Verlander's going to have to have a ton of ownership. Yeah, and I'm just, like, messing around with DK. You can do a Verlander sale lineup. Like, it, it's definitely possible with a bunch of Dodgers. So, the Dodgers are going to be super chalky. Red Sox, Dodgers, and Zobrist. Yeah, you can... Or Red Sox, Cubs, and Kike Hernandez. But you're getting, like, Devers and Jackie Bradley, Christian Vasquez as the Red Sox portion, which I don't necessarily hate. They've got the highest implied total, so. Yeah, so that's, I mean, 
you that, can, does that make like you a, think that Verlander will have higher ownership if you can get to both of those guys too? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that makes you think the Dodgers are going to be mega chalk because they're not going up against one of the studs. Yep. They're going up against Caleb Smith. Yep. Um, makes me like Smith more as a leverage play. I think he can pitch really well here. I think he's capable of that. And then... It's making me like Garrett Richards. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because I think he's just going to get slept on. He could. Like, I, man, I'm really interested to see how the ownership's going to fall on this slate. Yeah, the fact that you can make a sale Verlander <laughs> lineup and it's not, like, some atrocity means those two guys are going to be owned dramatically. Well, yeah, you can just get in Kike, Chris Taylor, Turner, 3,700. You could fit in pretty much the top four or the top five for the Dodgers, and then, like, Forsyth is 2,700. And then you can just piece together a, a lineup with a Dodger stack really easily with the two top-scoring pitchers. Dodgers, Cubs with – oh, that's Sale Bueller. Never mind. I was going to say, like, wow, that lineup is loaded. Yeah. <laughs> but just because there was a different pitcher. Yeah, I mean – Every single line is going to have at least one of Sale or Verlander, except for, like, very specific people playing 150 lines that are like me, and they'll have, you know, a Bueller-Richards line or something stupid. Yeah. Those top two guys are going to be nuts unless that Yankees-Nats game clears up, and I don't see that happening. So maybe the the top bats, like the, the high price bats on DK, like Betts and JD Martinez, these guys will go a little bit under owned. I think the Braves will go under owned for the spot that they're in. I think the Cubs will probably go a little bit under owned too because it's just it's possible to pay up for pitching. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sorting this out by salary right now just to see. Yeah, like I got, you know, Betts is 5,700. I got him in 35% of the lines. Freddie Freeman. 30% of the lines. Albies in 14, 13% right now. JD Martinez, 32 but Like, you can you can get all the big bats and still do whatever you want. Um, yeah. So it'll be, it's going to be a lot of Sale plus Richards or Smith or Bueller. Mm. Vice versa with Verlander. And you'll be able to just go wherever you want hitting. Yeah. That, I hate slates like this where it's like Man. Four games, and I feel like there's a never-ending amount of possibilities. <clears throat> yeah. So I'm more likely to just, like, you got to hope that Verlander and Sale just don't uh, do that well, is what I would, like, that would be my idea, and just pay up for hitting and hope that you get a game stack or two stacks that really go off and you make up the pitching points elsewhere. Because um, if Verlander or Sale even scores, like, 35 40 points here on DK, you're going to need him to have probably cash. So um, you just got to bet against that is what I'm probably going to do, which sucks. It's going to be a weird one. Um, I should rerun my uh, my FanDuel crunch with the Yankees lines out just to give people an idea. Since we're on here and we're already done. Yeah. Oh, uh, in the comments section, guys, if you're still actually watching this video, uh, let me know if there's any other stuff you would like to see on the the main screen that I normally have up here for most of the show. Uh, happy to work in any additional stuff. Uh, i got plenty of screen space to play with right now. Um, so I'm going to clean this all up and make sure that we can see basically everything that we would want to see. So check that stuff out. Yeah. Yeah, tons of sale Verla and Verlander on FanDuel. Uh, they'll make up most of the ownership. And then it's Bueller and Smith. They look to be the other two guys. Um, but, you know, FanDuel's weird. Lots of Red Sox Dodgers stacks at the top. Yeah, it's just too easy. That's, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, it's going to be a weird one. Uh, hockey, talk to me about it. Yeah, the Vegas Winnipeg game is tonight. Game three, going back to Vegas. I will have the showdown article out, of course. Um, yeah, it should be another awesome game. That series, two completely different games so far, and I'm expecting a really good game three. So I'm excited to watch. Um, so read that article. It'll come out 
probably by time you're seeing this, it'll probably be out. So is that series one one? <clears throat> it is one one. Yep. Okay. Um, we've got Rockets Warriors tonight, game two. If anybody watched last night, uh, the Celtics took down the Cavs, so they're up two nothing. Um, and we've got another play line contest to plug. So the awesomeo.com presents the million dollar perfect line bonus, $3,600 guaranteed. It's called the big shot. Got to pick the points, rebounds, and assists for James Harden, Draymond Green, Steph Curry. So you want to go to playline.com slash R slash awesomeo. Uh, that'll get you a free $5 along with a uh, deposit bonus. I put up an article yesterday at awesomeo.com. Uh, breaking down Draymond Green's line for the day, so check that out. Uh, we've had some overlay in the past, so you want to get there. Um, you know, you got a better chance to win some money. We've got some spots to fill right now. Take on some of the rest of the Osmo.com staff and that, but I'm letting you know right now, I'm coming for that top spot. I'm feeling it tonight. I'm feeling it. Yeah. Got my finger on the pulse of Draymond Green, Steph Curry, and James Harden. Is that the only game tonight? Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. just one game oh, yeah. for the rest of the they're year. They're going, yeah, they're going every other right. I think game tomorrow, actually. I think, <clears throat> I think they're fully off. Oh, weird. Yeah. Let me double check that so I'm not wrong. Uh, <laughs> se- what's today? 16, 17. So they're off the next two days, actually. The next next game after tonight is Boston-Cleveland Saturday. And uh, if you follow the NBA lottery, uh, the Suns won the lottery last night. So I don't know. Who cares? The Suns suck. <laughs> <laughs> that's all i've got uh live stream tonight at six myself and chris gonna have whew, not a lot to talk about <laughs> you guys get to play dfs weatherman on, yeah, on which, tonight you know, all i'm doing is just reading a weather report like every single other person if anybody asks me like oh you think that game's gonna happen i don't know man <laughs> well i mean i literally yeah just pull up accuweather and go yeah. on the future radar and you, I mean, I would just like to make my own call. I mean, there are DFS weathermen or whatever, and you know, good for them if they're going to put out information and do the work for you, but I'd rather just do it and make the call myself. Yeah, I don't know shit about meteorology, so yeah, I just have to let everybody else do it. Um, that's it. Check out Spotlight Hitters, Pitchers, and Stacks. Um, come to the live stream. It's going to be – you'll be able to get your questions answered tonight. I expect a thin crowd on this. A lot of – a lot of fast food discussion, I'm sure. Yeah. A lot of Chris uh, yelling at the chat. It'll be great. Yeah, yeah. Chris, Chris will berate the chat. We'll talk about Chick Fil A. We'll pick home run picks. I might, I might start changing this game to like pick a guy that hits a single or pick a guy that draws like a really nice walk because I can't seem to pick a home run to save my life. Yeah, I mine was terrible too last night. Turn it into anything. Uh, I didn't look at J.D. Martinez's final line, but the Red Sox did not do as well as I was anticipating, so I can only assume that he was shit. <laughs> Let's pull it up here. Red Sox. Where are you hiding? Fox. Yeah, well, he had three runs, so. Moreland grounded into a fielder's choice. Ben and Tendy homered, which I was looking at, and then Betts grounded out to score the run, so, you know, they're not, they're not even scoring without getting it out. JD Martinez one for four. Who did Chris take? There you go. Uh, Goodrum. Oh, Jesus, there's no way he homered, right? Uh, man, if he did, then in five innings. Did that game get rained out? Five innings? No, didn't it? Oh no. Oh, why did you say five know? innings then? I don't know. <clears throat> I have no idea. Uh, where's that game? Oh, uh, they got some runs late. Yeah. Nah, nothing. What did he finish? All right. One for, so, th- one for three with a walk. So an offer by the Osmo crew. Yep. Another day, we'll, well, one day I'll get one. One day I'll be on the board. There you got go. anything else you want to add? Let's just get out of here. Uh, good luck. Good luck on this early slate. Probably better than to play the late, but, um... Make some money tonight, and then shout out to the Osmo.com crew. Alrighty. Best of luck, everybody. We'll talk to you later.